25, it's just 25 days ago, just the 1st of October, when a man in Las Vegas opened fire on a crowd, killed 58 people, wounding another 546. Now, after the first few days, when everyone was free with their thoughts and prayers, not actual activity, thoughts and prayers, but now, silence. I'm hearing crickets. It's like it never happened. If you should mention it to a politician, what about that shooting? They'll say, that's old news already. Because when it was new news, they said, you can't talk about gun control. Let's politicizing. We have to not talk about it for a little while until everybody forgets and we'll never talk about it. <coughs> See, Wikipedia defines a mass shooting as an event involving the shooting, not necessarily resulting in deaths of four or more people. That's hardly noteworthy today. Come on, we do it 500 at a time. Only four killed? That would be like an only four were killed today news event. It would only actually make the news if those four people shooting suspended service on the rush hour L train. <laughs> because, hey, it's just a shooting. So, if instead of flying planes into the World Trade Center tower, the 9-11 terrorists had just shot 3,500 or 4,000 people from the roof of the World Trade Center, no one would be commemorating that event 16 years later except the families of the victims. If the World Trade Center attack had been with guns, they wouldn't have made it as hard to buy a gun as has now become to fly. No one would be asked to take their shoes off or get x-rayed before buying a gun. There wouldn't be a no-gun list. Think of how easy it would be to limit the availability of guns if it were just as difficult to get a gun as it is now to get on a plane. Right? We'll start with making a passport a requirement, send some photos, wait a few weeks, even if you got a lot of money and it's expedited, it's going to take a few days. So today, if you wake up in the morning and say, I think I'd like to spend the evening in Toronto, if you don't have a passport, you can't do it. But if you should wake up and say, I think I would like to shoot a bunch of people this evening, then you show up at the gun shop. There's no more procedure more elaborate than, I don't know, counting out the money at the register. And then, it's easier to pull off a mass shooting than it is to get on a plane to Toronto. I always wonder at those militia guys wearing camouflage. Didn't they hear about night scopes and infrared heat sensors? <laughs> the government, they was, oh, we're going to fight the tyrannical government. Well, well, that government has drones and satellites. They can see those guys from space. What's with the camouflage guys? <laughs> they always say, oh, we're, we want our guns so we can fight a tyrannical government. They always claim they're going to fight the tyrannical government. Well, who's that tyrannical government? Oh, it's the United States. So these militia yahoos think they're ready to stand up to the United States Army, who has some real stuff. So whenever I hear these right-wing guys talk about, we're ready to fight the tyrannical government, I'm saying, so you believe it's okay to shoot cops? Because who do you think is going to come from the tyrannical government? Cops. You're going to shoot our troops? Oh, we love cops. We love our troops. Sorry, you're buying guns so you can shoot them. Oh, but we're more patriotic than you people on the coast. <laughs> They're in the heartland. We're in the brainland. <laughs> so come on. Who do you think they're going to be fighting? When some guy says we have to be ready to fight for our freedom, then you say, oh, so you're ready to shoot cops. All of that Blue Lives Matter stuff isn't that important when you're talking about keeping your guns. See, too many of these guys watched Red Dawn. So they think when the bad guys take over, it's going to be a bunch of Cuban movie extras that they're shooting at. <laughs> when they don't realize they're going to be fighting the United States Marines. This is serious. There's going to be like Air Force. All right, so if instead of white guys in camouflage brandishing guns, there's only one way to get gun control. There got to be more black guys doing mass shootings. If there were more black guys brandishing guns, if instead of white guys in camouflage, there were black guys in droopy pants and hoodies, that's like the fear garment, then they would be controlling guns. You know? What is it with that stupid fashion, droopy pants? Why does it inflame white people so much? There are some communities that have made droopy pants a legal issue. It's just a way to harass young black men. They're calling it indecent exposure. But it's not indecent exposure because 
It's just underwear when the pants come down. You see, you're allowed to wear cotton shorts in the street, but if you're wearing the cotton shorts just over the top of your pants, and you're black, suddenly it's an issue. So I have an idea that'll solve this problem. I'm gonna put out a line of boxer shorts printed with Levi's jeans. Back pockets, belt, so when your pants kind of slip down, it looked like you're wearing a backup pair of jeans. Of course, the real problem is that the style is worn by young black men, so it's just another form of legal harassment, like the drug laws. See, when heroin was seen as a black thing, we could have harsh laws to keep those people in check. But now that lots of young white kids are becoming addicted, we hear about, oh, it's an illness. We have to treat these people with compassion. So when the children of Republicans become addicts, we don't want to throw them in jail and throw away the key. Sorry. Maybe uh, if only white kids wore droopy pants, it wouldn't be a police issue. Oh, maybe the fashion police. <laughs> Even serial sexual predator Bill Cosby made an issue of droopy pants. Remember that? He just said, if black kids would just pull up their jeans and wear flamboyant sweaters instead of hoodies, the issue of racism in America would be solved. I think, really, we are so far from ending racism in this country that anyone thinks it's better because Obama was president for two terms is not paying attention. As and I know some of you say, oh, I'm not a racist. I'm, I'm perfectly fine. So which of you non-racists have ever, on a rainy night when a taxi stopped, said, I'm not going to get in this cab. You pass that black guy. Go on, I'm not going to support racism. I'm going to stand in the rain unless you back up and pick that black guy up who was hailing me. I know, some of you claim you're not racist on that rainy night. You pulled your hood back so the cabbie would see your white face. Oh, the cabbie's a racist. I just wanted to give him an opportunity to see that he should pass that guy and pick me up. All right. So you say you're not a racist. Can we stop using the term black on black crime? Why do white people always justify cops killing black kids with, well, what about black on black crime? That's like saying cops will shoot fewer black people when the perpetrators of crimes are always of a different race than their victims. Wait a minute. So cops will stop shooting black kids when more white muggers travel to black neighborhoods to work? You never hear about white on white crime. Well, other than when the bankers stole the economy a few years ago, and it was a different story. Now, I know what the solution to black-on-black -black crime is. Integrated housing in neighborhoods. You see, most criminals are lazy. That's why they rob people. And they're too lazy to travel far. So their victims are usually local people. But if in all white places, they're white criminals. So if we had integrated communities, then there would be a certain number of white and black criminals in all communities and there would be more interracial crime. <laughs> solving the black on black crime issue. Then the Fox commentators can stop talking about black on black crime and talk about, what's the other thing? Oh yeah, what about those shootings in Chicago? Like if only people in Chicago would stop shooting one another, then all the cops would stop shooting innocent people. I don't know about that. You see, now we have uh, some of these guys, they're dangerous to everyone, and most dangerous, even to white people, most dangerous to white women. You see, Republicans are now gloating because Harvey Weinstein supported the Clintons. So they think that's kind of like an equivalent. Like, well, now that guess excuses Donald Trump. Even liberals can be, you know, sexual perverts and abusers. No, no, no. Donald Trump's still guilty. What we really learned from the Me Too postings that followed these revelations is how common this abuse is. Even more predators get revealed. Yesterday, even Elie Wiesel late Holocaust survivor and Nobel laureate was accused of molesting a woman in 1989. And today's news, we even had H.W. Bush, George H.W. Bush, in the wheelchair, was grabbing some woman behind. <laughs> I'm saying, you know, I'm not going to be surprised if I discover anyone, like someday some women who worked in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. <laughs> uh, we're going to get the revelations about Fred Rogers. Oh, no. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Would you like to feel my cardigan against your bare skin? Can you say cardigan? I mean, really. Now, the accusers, the accusers are the ones that are blamed. You know, the women are always at fault. Oh, well, she should have just quit working there. She should have just left show business. 
what does that mean? Or, um, she looked the wrong way. If only she looked this way, or maybe not that way. It's always the woman. If a woman's assaulted, it's because she asked for it by wearing the wrong clothes or for having had alcohol. Rape victims have been said to be at fault. Now, this concept that the victim must have been asking for it will only change when men in expensive suits and gold watches are told they are responsible for having been mugged. You were mugged? You were beaten and robbed, but you're to blame. The mugger's attorney would claim that the man's suit and watch was an invitation to robbery. What else could you expect when walking around with a multi-thousand dollar Patek Philippe watch on your wrist? You could just tell he wanted it. Look at that expensive suit. Only someone who enjoyed being robbed would wear a suit like that. Revealing of your wealth. Oh, the defense would also call witnesses to testify they had seen the victim buy drinks for friends or pick up bar tabs. Witnesses can say that they have seen him even give money to homeless beggars. You see, he has an established history of being free with money. This wasn't really a mugging. It was consensual rough philanthropy. <laughs> now, people claim we got this new religious thing, like uh, religious freedom means you get to suppress people. So they, they, they claim that they, they, they persecute homosexuals because it's in the Bible. But the Bible also forbids wearing garments of mixed linen and wool fibers. So, can I refuse to bake a cake for a guy wearing a linen and wool suit? Can we beat them up? Now, now then there's some people who say, well, it's not the Bible, but homosexuality is not natural. I'm thinking, banking is not natural. <laughs> there isn't a species in the entire globe that does banking. So do we take away the rights of the banker because what he does isn't natural? Then there's, let's take away the rights because what they do is icky. I have the same reaction to seeing people eat raw shellfish. <laughs> so according to what those Christians say, if I see a banker wearing a linen and wool suit eating raw shellfish, I can physically assault him and deny him a job or an apartment. I am unsure why the religious people persecute lesbians, however, because the Bible forbids man with man, but makes no mention about woman with woman. So lesbianism is not prohibited by the Bible because apparently God liked to watch lesbians and didn't want to discourage any activities of his chosen people. Listen, this looks like a mad rant, but it's actually a, a rehearsed thing. So, and I know there's some of you waiting to do your thing, so I'd like to thank you very much for having participated in this mad rant. Thank you.